Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a careful proof. We're going to prove that the function f of x equals one over x squared is uniformly continuous on this set here, a to infinity, where a is a positive number. So before we do this proof, let me refresh your memory on what it means for a function to be uniformly continuous. So I'll just write it here, I'll say f is uniformly continuous on some set which I'll call S, so on S. And in our case, S here is going to be the specific set here. So it's a subset of the real numbers. You could apply this to n-dimensional space as well. You can say S is a subset of Rn if you wanted to. So F is uniformly continuous on S if I'm going to use some shorthand notation. So this upside down a means for all. So if for all epsilon greater than zero, this backwards e means there exists. So there exists a delta greater than zero. ST means such that for all x, y in our set S with the distance between x and y being smaller than delta, we have that the distance between f of x and f of y is less than epsilon. And so this definition is really important, uh, and it's really important to understand it in order to you know, start writing proofs uh, with uniform continuity. If you don't know what this is about, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. This is like a typical uh, advanced calculus problem or like a real analysis problem that we, you would learn as a math major if you were an undergrad. I want to emphasize something here. I'm going to use a different color because there's different ways of writing the definition. There's different words you can use. Just like saying the same thing in English, you can say it different ways. Same thing in math, you can say the same thing different ways. So I can take this, what I put here in a white bracket, and I can say, I can rephrase it as follows. I can say that this is the same as saying that x, y, and s, and x minus y and delta. And we're, we're assuming it's for all x, y, but I just want to write it like this, with an and. And then instead of writing we have, I can say this implies, and this, this might help understand the logic behind the proof. So basically to prove it's uniform, conti uniformly continuous, we have to show that this implication is true, right? So it's an if p, uh, then q type statement. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this is the definition we have to use. So let's start by working out the scratch work. Okay, so this is how we figure it out, scratch. So basically we have an epsilon greater than zero and we, we need to come up with this delta greater than zero such that whenever we have this condition here, uh, it implies this condition here. So we're gonna have you know x minus y less than delta. And we basically need f of x minus f of y less than epsilon. So f of x is one over s x squared, so f of y is one over y squared. So we need, again, this is not the proof, this is just how you figure it out, which in my view is extremely important. So we need this, right? We need one over x squared minus one over y squared to be less than epsilon, that's what we want. So we can subtract these, and I'm gonna take some major shortcuts here in the algebra. So basically the common denominator here is x squared y squared, so this can be written as y squared minus x squared over x squared y squared. And then you know you have the distance between x and y being smaller than delta. So that should lead you to think about factoring the numerator, the difference of squares. So you can write it as y minus x, y plus x over, and then here we have x squared, y squared. One thing I should also mention is that we also know that x and y are greater than or equal to a. I'd say, why is that the case? Well, it's because x and y are in this set, right? So if they're members of this set, they're certainly greater than or equal to the number a, which is positive. So they're also positive numbers. So they're not gonna be zeros. There's no funky stuff going on there. So this term we can control. And what I mean by that is we know that the distance between x and y is less than delta. So this is not an issue. What we need to focus on is this piece here. I'm gonna use a different color. I'm just gonna focus on this piece here, then we're gonna come back to this. So note that if you have y plus x 
over x squared y squared. You can break this up as y over x squared y squared plus x over x squared y squared. And one of the y's is going to cancel, so here you get x squared y. And then here you get 1 over x y squared. And these are bounded, right? Because x is greater than or equal to a. So that means that you could divide both sides by x and divide by a. So that would mean that 1 over a is greater than or equal to 1 over x. It est 1 over x is less than or equal to 1 over a. You could do the same thing with y. So 1 over y is less than or equal to 1 over a. And again, a is not 0. That was given at the outset. So here we have 1 over x squared y. So that's basically going to be less than or equal to 1 over a squared a, so a cubed. Just some algebra, and you do get better at it, no worries. Okay, so this is going to be bounded by this. So basically what we have is that our friend here is going to be, I'll write it again, y squared minus x squared over x squared y squared. Okay, this is going to be equal to this, y minus x, y plus x, over x squared, y squared. Okay, and then uh, you can break this up. Um, if you have the absolute value of a product, it's the product of the absolute values. This is the absolute value of y minus x times the absolute value of y plus x over x squared, y squared. And we know that the piece inside the absolute value uh, is, well, I could just put an absolute value here, right? There's no issue, right? All this is true even with an absolute value. Okay, so um, this piece here, so this is less than or equal to, this one hangs out. You can flip the x and the y. Uh, algebraically, it's really easy to prove. Intuitively, the absolute value of y minus x is the distance between y and x, but that's the same thing as the distance between x and y, which is the absolute value of x minus y, so there's no issue there. And this is times 2 over a cubed. And I purposely dropped the absolute value just to kind of force the notion that it doesn't matter, right? Because a is positive, 2 is positive. When you have a quotient of positive numbers, you get a positive number. And we've pretty much figured out the proof. Now we're going to prove it. Um, this is less than delta given at the outset. So this is less than delta times 2 over a cubed. So we can choose delta to be um, the reciprocal, right? The reciprocal of of 2 over a cubed, so we'll just say it's um, a cubed over 2 times epsilon. And that will force uh, everything to be less than epsilon. So let's go ahead and write the proof. Okay, let's write the proof. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to yellow. I need to find some more fun colors that you can actually read on the screen. So yellow is pretty good and so is the blue. Oh, let's try a funky orange. I'll write a little bit bigger. So the definition of absolute value, you should know it. Um, so recall basically, or, or rather a uniform continuity, you should know it. So it basically says for all epsilon greater than zero, I'm going to write it again up here. There exists a delta greater than zero, such that x, y, and s, and the distance between x and y less than delta implies the absolute value of f of x minus f of f y is less than epsilon. So that's what it means for f to be uniformly continuous on s. So we need to have it on the screen, or at least you need to think about it in your mind in order to write the proof, because you want to start by indicating that epsilon is greater than zero. So you say, let epsilon be greater than zero. Okay, and now we're gonna indicate our choice of delta. So choose, so this is why I spent so much time with the scratch work, because if I just show you this, then it won't make any sense. And a lot of a lot of older books, specifically older books, which are considered classics, uh, unfortunately do that. Um, I think it's okay. I you know I have opinions, but as they say, it is what it is. And um, at the end of the day, you want to learn how to do it. Then, okay. So then, if so, we get to assume this part. Right. So then if x, y, and s, in our case s is this set here, a infinity, and the distance between x minus y less than delta. So if we have these two conditions, we have, so we have 1 over x squared, that's f of x, 
minus 1 over y squared, okay? And we know that this is equal to, we worked this out before, right? So I'll make a little bit of a leap here. This is the absolute value of y minus x, y plus x, this is from before, over x squared, y squared. Let's break it up into two pieces, okay? So this is equal to the absolute value of, I'm going to say x minus y, because you know it's y minus x, but we can reverse it, times, and then here we have y plus x over x squared, y squared, okay? And we know um, that this is less than, this is less than delta. This piece here, um, you can break it up into two pieces using algebra. It's y over this here. I guess I'll show it. I'm trying to skip steps, save time, but I will show the step. And this is equal to delta. And then here we have uh, the y cancels. So we have one over x squared y. We're basically retracing everything. And I think it's important to do it. It's instructive. It makes you stronger. Here we can use the triangle inequality on this piece here. Recall the triangle inequality says if you have the absolute value of a plus b, that's less than or equals to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. It also holds uh, for complex numbers, just some extra good life info. So this is delta. Okay, and then here we have the absolute value of one over x squared y. I'm gonna put a bracket here. Plus uh, the absolute value of one over x y squared. clean up my handwriting. Uh, this is um, less than or equal to delta. I'm going to drop the absolute values because uh, basically this is going to be, oh, I'll leave it for now, 1 over a cubed plus and then 1 over a cubed. Okay, and so this is going to be equal to delta. You can drop the absolute value in atom because a is greater than 0, so this is just 2 over a cubed. Okay, and then delta is equal to, um, I believe we said it was equal to a cubed uh, epsilon over 2, right? That was our choice of delta. Let's just go back and make sure that it's way up here. Yeah, a cubed epsilon over 2. So that's going to be our delta. And then so here we have 2 over a cubed. And so the 2s cancels, the 8s used cancels, so we get epsilon. And that completes the proof, right? That completes the proof. So we've shown that this function is uniformly continuous on, um, on that set from A to infinity. So yeah, that's the proof. So we started with, let me highlight everything important so you have it in case you're still with me. So let epsilon be greater than zero. We did that. We chose our delta, so it exists. It's positive, by the way. I mean, I, maybe I should have said that, right? I mean, epsilon is positive, A is positive, so... This is a positive number, yet yeah, you know, probably should be said, so I forgot to say that. Then we get to assume this part. So we've done that here. We've done that here. And then now we have to show this part's true, so that's what the rest of the proof is about. So hopefully this video has uh, helped someone out there in the world. If this has helped you, leave a comment or something or let me know. Um, these videos take a lot of time to make, but they're not hard. To, you know, it's... I'm hoping it helps someone who's trying to learn. This is a tough topic, and hopefully you've understood even just some of this. Good luck.